Everyone has a different time period, which I think is ideal to start studying for the MCAT. But what happens when you have less time than you want? Hi guys, I'm Sonia with MCAT Mastery and today I'm here to talk to you guys about time crunches. I found myself facing a time crunch when I started to study for the MCAT. I tried to give myself around two and a half months to study, but it was my junior year and so there was a lot of work, a lot of extracurriculars, and I also had a job. And so by the time final season came around, it was really difficult to start studying. I decided to wait and then I could start my winter break, but right at the beginning of that, I also got COVID. And so it was a really stressful time period that put me out of commission for another week and I found myself facing a really big time crunch. But I learned a lot from that experience and I would love to give you guys some tips and tricks that I learned that helped me to get through that time period. First, creating a schedule is so key. Figure out how much time you have each day to study and be honest with yourself and account for breaks. If you find yourself getting burned out after two or three hours of studying, account for that break and give yourself an hour break every two to three hours of studying. And factor in any other commitments that you have like work, a job, school, and just really plot out how much time you have each day to focus on the MCAT. Make sure you account for other breaks as well, such as going out with friends, just taking a weekly break, just to rest and relax, whatever it is that you need to rest and recharge. One of the worst feelings when you're taking the MCAT is feeling burnt out even when you have a lot more to do and you know that you have a long way to go. And so keeping yourself rest and recharged between your study sessions will really help you not get burned out before it's time to take the test. Once you have this time allotted in your schedule, the next step is to figure out what kind of content and practice you wanna do. Make a list of all the content review and all the practice questions that you wanna cover in order to feel ready for the test at the minimum. So that means taking all the AAMC material and doing all the content review of the Kaplan books ones, which is what I did, or incorporating other questions like UWorld or using other books, whatever it is, just make a list of all of it. And so you have everything ready to go when it's time to actually plot them out into your schedule. So now you have the time that you have to study and all of the content and material that you want to cover in that allotted time. All that's left to do is plot out that material into those time slots. And so something that helped me to figure out exactly what schedule to use is to figure out my strengths and weaknesses. I knew I was good at memorization and I was in my junior year of college and so I had just learned a lot of this material in the semester or the semesters past and all of the content was pretty recent to me. And so I was able to allot only two to three weeks to content review and because I didn't have another job I could kind of focus all day on MCAT content review and so two to three weeks was enough for me. And that gave me another month to really just focus on practice questions. Everyone's strengths and weaknesses vary, and so it's totally up to you to decide how to allot your time. If you're someone who needs a lot of content review and maybe not as much help doing practice questions, maybe you're more familiar with the types of questions that are being asked, or you're better at reading passages or something like that, then you might want to allot a lot more time to content review than I did. Um, and I'm sure there are some of you who might need about an even amount of both. And so it's really up to you to kind of figure out your strengths and weaknesses and how they can play into your MCAT schedule. Another thing that really helped me during this time crunch was to figure out my strengths and weaknesses in terms of content. And so if there was something that I knew that I knew less, just because I was more unfamiliar with it, had less practice with it, or just needed to memorize it again. And for me, this was something like physics equations or metabolic pathways in biochem. These kind of things you should definitely put first in your study schedule, whether that's in content review or practice questions, wherever you do it, just make sure you have those things first. And that way you're giving yourself a lot of time to memorize them, learn them, them, practice them, and so you're really ready to go and you feel comfortable with those topics the most when it comes to taking the test. One last tip I have is don't neglect practice during your content review. You don't have to take an entire practice test, and in fact I would advise against it, and you don't even have to take an entire practice section. I would just advise that after you do each chapter, you do the practice questions that are relevant to that chapter, and even if that's just one passage per chapter, that's totally fine. This way you'll just start to get used to the types of questions that you might see on the MCAT, and you can start to hone in on which strategies are working for you and helping you get through the passage and the questions. For example, when I was starting out my MCAT practice, one section that I struggled with a lot was the bio biochem section, just because the passages were so dense and there was so much information that you needed to know to answer the questions. By incorporating this passage practice into my content review, I was able to start to familiarize myself with how the passage looked, what kind of questions were being asked, and it helped me practice navigating through the passage and picking out information that was important to retain in order to answer the questions. I would suggest that you try out a different technique for each section that you take a practice passage for. This can include things like highlighting or reading through the questions first before reading the passage, anything that you find works for you. This way, when you get to the practice part of your MCAT preparation, where you're really just focusing on practice questions, practice tests, and just taking practice sections, 
you'll already find yourself comfortable with the test structure and this way you'll be able to better identify gaps in your content knowledge. So this concludes my tips and tricks for MCAT time crunches. A time crunch is never an ideal situation, but by assessing your strengths and weaknesses and really using them to your advantage when you create your schedule, there's nothing that you can overcome to still do a great job on the MCAT and still hit your goal score. Remember not to get stressed and to really follow your schedule to the T. And this includes break times. Scheduling specific break times gives you something to look forward to after a hard day of studying. And from personal experience, it's really, really helpful. And of course, if you're having any trouble creating your schedule or you have any specific questions about your own strengths and weaknesses, you can always ask an MCAT Mastery Mentor and we'd love to help you out in creating your schedule. Remember that you have everything it takes to find success in the MCAT and you can click the link below to get more tips and tricks like these from other people who have already taken the MCAT and who are ready to give back with their knowledge. Good luck and you got this.